We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? You know what? I'm doing okay. Um, Ohio State, Michigan State. We're going to review the game. We're going to talk about the game. We're going to grade the positions. And I'm making a deliberate effort to try to get into the show sooner. Because YouTube stuff. So full beatdown. Yes, Spikes, a full beatdown. Uh, are we going to worry about there only being three points in the second half? No, we aren't. You, when you score 35 in the first, you're kind of a dickhead if you try and score 35 in the second. Would that have made my, my score prediction get a lot closer? Sure. Minus special teams. Uh, there's another position group I'm going to, I'm going to rip into Spikes when it, when it comes time. There's another position group I'm going to rip into. Yeah, but the but the important thing is, though, Jared, that Ohio State got the cover. That's the important thing, right? <laughs> right. That's that's the important thing. Ohio State does cover with a few points left over. Not a lot left over, but a few points left over. Yeah. The other team gives up trying uh, to put up points too. I I couldn't tell the difference, Gangland. If they quit trying to score points, I couldn't tell the difference. Yeah. Well, here's, here's, here, here's, here's the thing here. Yeah. As Jared said, Ohio State scored 35 points in the first half, only scored three in the second half. But to me, to me, what I looked in, into this game, I mean, yeah, McCord had himself a great game, uh, 77% completion, three touchdowns over 300 yards in this game. Fantastic game. This is the kind of game that, that hopefully it's going to be that morale booster for McCord here. Uh, looked really well in the pocket. The The offensive line gave him plenty of time, and we saw when he had plenty of time, he was very, very accurate. Uh, looking at the stats here, Jared, nine targets to Marvin Harrison Jr., seven completions. Seven targets to Cade Stover, seven completions. Like, yeah, his his two his two main targets. He was pretty much dead on, dead on with those two there. Yeah, uh, uh, he, but, but, he but, did, but the other he did struggle getting the other, it to the other wide receivers a bit. Um, Mecca's not right yet, and then he does nah. he does hurt himself again in this game where he com comes off the field limping. I think he comes back in the game. I don't think that was his last play. Although I don't remember a hundred percent, not that it matters because we can't ever get a decent injury report out of Ryan Day or Ohio State anyway. Um, look like a tweak, if anything. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I'm not saying like he totally like. I'm not saying it was a break. Yeah, I'm just saying it was like he hasn't looked right since he came back. No, no, he is not. Um, and, and that's the point. Like if he didn't, nothing even happened on that play other than him running. So if he retweaked it on that play, then he wasn't right to begin with. Um, I don't think, I don't think he's going to be right this season. I think is probably the unfortunate truth of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, so a lot, I mean, a lot, a lot of great things to take from this, from this game here. Talked about, how good McCord looked, how good Marvin Harrison Jr. looked. He had, he had himself uh, three three touchdowns in this game. It's going to help him with his uh, with his Heisman numbers there. Uh, but I still, I still think he needs that signature moment or that signature game, which he has the opportunity here in two weeks here. Yeah, if, uh, but, if, he but, wants, but, if he wants to win the Heisman, he's going to have to have a similar game, a, but against not state. Yeah. But what I look what I look into this game though, yeah. Everybody was thrilled with the offense here, but the defense here going into this game, we weren't we weren't worried about Michigan State's offense. Like we knew we knew they didn't really pose much of a threat offensively and and the defense uh defense uh stood up here. 182 yards allowed for the entire game. 88 in the air, 94 on the ground, and and just and just looking at the uh, the numbers here, Jared. So if I go to comparisons here, 
let, let me move the quarter in halves. In the second half, Sparty had only 64 yards in the second half. When, when Ohio State wasn't even trying. They put in their second string. They put in a bunch of other players there and only let up 64 yards. And seven of those 64 yards was in the fourth quarter. Yep. Only seven yards in the fourth quarter allowed. And, and that's usually when you see maybe a team usually maybe gets a late late touchdown or late score or whatever because you have the second or third string in just trying to get some some players some experience here but garbage time yeah but only seven yards in that fourth quarter there yeah very 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 impressed with the with the defense as a whole here spike says that was yards. the worst offense we faced all year that includes youngstown state I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong. I tell you what, I was, there were moments I was, we were concerned a little bit about Ohio State's rush defense there. Uh, both both of their running backs, uh, Carter, still, Carter Mangum, Carter Mangum got some, got some movement going um, at times. Uh, Carter had almost five yards of carry and Mangum had four yards of carry, but, but in the end, they, they needed to pass in order to to beat Ohio State and not going to beat Ohio State when you only complete the ball 50% of the time and we have look, and, and less than 100 yards. We have a serious issue with the rush defense. And uh, Gangland says Eichenberg is our rush defense most games. I'm not even going to put it. Eichenberg doesn't play in this game. Josh Proctor doesn't play in this game. Um, and of course, Ransom doesn't play in this game. Um. I, I'm i not going to say that that was a huge deal in this game. Um, ripped off decent runs early in drives, then would stall out. I mean, yeah, because they're a bad team. Even when they'd make some good plays, they'd make stupid mistakes or totally mis-execute on a play, and then it would kill their drive because they're a bad team with a bad offense. I mean, that's 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 how that works. Mm -hmm. Offense... When you're facing even a decent defense, offense is about consistency and not getting behind this, you know, getting behind on schedule. It's just what it is. Um, and, you know, Ohio State is a good defense and uh, Michigan State is not a good offense. But we uh, I think it comes down to Knowles making bad play call or two on those long drives. He said, so I Penn State popped off a few big runs against this. Um, Knowles makes $2 million a year and is, has secure and has earned that and more. He's totally secured his job when it goes bad because he's a good coach and a good leader and not Deion Sanders. He's just, he's going to take the blame. He's just straight up going to take the blame. That's, that's what he's going to do. I respect him for it, but you know, we need to start having a serious conversation about the rush defense. Um, the defensive line gives up way too much ground. And, and am I bringing this up partially because I just watched Michigan not, well, they technically did call a pass play in the second half, but it, was, it didn't count because it got called back on a penalty. So, if we don't count the one pass play that they did call that technically didn't count, Michigan didn't pass the ball in the second half against Penn State. They did not throw it once. So when I watch Ohio State's defensive line get blown off the ball by a couple yards against a Michigan State team that's not very good, against a Rutgers offensive line that's fine, against the Wisconsin offensive line that is not a Wisconsin offensive line as we are used to thinking about them. And then Michigan, who, who's won two straight offensive line of the year awards. And I don't think their offensive line is as good as this year as it was last year, but it's still really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very, very concerned about this defense's ability because I, I don't care how good your play calling is. I don't care what your scheme is. 
if you're going to get beat that bad offensive line versus defensive line, it's going to go poorly. And I think Ohio State on look at Penn State. As an example, I think Ohio State got bailed out by some bad play calling. Mike Yerstich, by the way, got fired from uh, Penn State on Sunday. They just kept running the ball at us. I think they have a much better game. My point is, is that, you know, it's really nice to get this game out of the way. And put up a bunch of points and have the, all, this is the first time we've pay, played a pass defense that wasn't exceptional. We had three or four weeks in a row playing excellent pass defenses. And now we played kind of a pedestrian pass defense and we saw what we can do against that. The pass defenses and the defenses in general in in the big 10, not counting Sparty are very, very good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think so many people right now are worried about the offense, which I am not. Again, I tried to tell people Rutgers, Wisconsin, Penn State. These guys have really good pass defenses. The fact that Kyle McCord looked like a human and not a superhuman against them was not a cause for concern for me at any point. Meanwhile, everyone keeps slobbering all over the defense. The offensive line has sneakily gotten better through the course of the year. They had a really good game this game. The offensive line looked really good this game. And I think no one wants to talk about because we like them all as individuals. We all like Jack Sawyer and we all like JT. We all like Ty Leak and we all like Mike Hall. But the fact of the matter is When a defense just lines up and runs it straight at Ohio State, they can chip us apart five yards at a time. And if they try, and and if and Michigan is not afraid to just take those five yards all the way down the field, and that's exactly what they're there going to t- try to do. And there are times. I mean, there there are times where Ohio State's defensive line stands up and makes great. Great plays, tackles right at the line, yard for loss, but they can do it. They can do it. It's just kind of like when we talk about the offense all year, it's that, it's that consistency. Can, can the defensive line consistently be that brick wall here? And we've seen throughout the year, the, the answer is no right now. Can, can they, can they, when, They've made they've made a lot of great stops, especially in the red zone. We've heard we've heard a lot about their third down defense is really good this year, but it's to me to me you got you got to be very consistent here, and they and they haven't been. Michigan State's Carter rushes four point seven yards per carry against Ohio State. Manungai um, for Rutgers six point six yards per carry against Ohio state Allen before he got hurt ran five yards per carry five yards per carry against Ohio state Nick Singleton rushed 5.3 against Ohio state why they only gave him the ball nine times is I think a reason why Mike Yersich got fired I don't understand like Maccabee (laughs) Maccabee at Purdue rushed 6.1 yards per carry against Ohio State. So Manungai, Manungai on the previous weekend, as Jared mentioned, 6.6 yards, 24 carries, 159 yards. This last weekend against Iowa, 13 carries, 39 yards. Yeah. My, Iowa has an exceptional, like, anyway. Um, Ohio State's defense is built for speed. And it's built to beat and hang with SEC teams. The problem is, is that when you face a team that's willing to put out fifth year. 330 pound. Six foot six offensive linemen. 
and then flank them with third, fourth, fifth year, six foot six, 280 pound tight ends. It starts to get a little difficult, and I, I don't know what the answer to that is. The offense is going to have to win the Teton game. Spikes, I think that's what I'm saying. And they're going to have to do so in an incredibly efficient manner because I don't know how many chances they're going to get. Keep them to three and outs. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how. Um, they they need to... One, uh, and, and I have all the confidence in the world that he will be, but you need to get Eichenberg back. You need to get Josh Proctor back. Um, I really like the way Hartford has played in, in stead of, of, uh, Josh Proctor. I think Hartford is hanging. He's absolutely doing everything he can. And I think he right now, uh, from a pass protection standpoint is doing fantastic. And I, and I really, really like him. Um, he's manned the position, but he isn't Proctor is what Spike said. And I think he's, I think he's absolutely doing everything Proctor can do in the secondary. He does. He at this point in his career, and he's a second year player. He's a red shirt freshman. He doesn't come up and run support like Proctor does. You need, you need Eichenberg and you need Proctor back. Um, I don't think you're getting ransom back, but. Uh, I don't think there's much, if any, drop off to Styles. So, you know, you need Eichenberg back. You need Styles in the game. You need Proctor in the game. Yep. He'll be fantastic, but now on uh, iffy on run support. I, I mean, I don't even want to say he's iffy. He's just not. He's small. Yes, Gangland. Thank you. I think that's what I'm trying to say. He's small. That's it. He's just, he, you know, he'll, he'll get bigger. Um, again, he's only a second year guy. Uh, I, I, I think his future is incredibly bright, but he's just not going to throw his nose into the pile the way Proctor does. And if he Ooh. does do it, that's not going to be as effective. What's curious, just looking at last year's game here with Ohio State and Michigan. Uh, yeah, there there was a couple of drives that Michigan had seven plus minute drives under old in that clock game. rules. Mm -hmm. Under old yes. clock rules. Yeah, and there and there were there were long long drives too, like the one here, fifteen plays, pretty much eight minutes off the clock. There, yeah. You, you get you got to be able to stop the run here. Yep. You got you, you got to get that you got to get that fixed quickly here. I I mean, I don't I don't know how you get that fixed. <laughs> um I don't know how you get that fixed. Uh, uh other than just playing better. Um yeah. playing tougher. Luckily, right. I'll, I'll say this and I know we're not even talking about Michigan State at this point, but what is there to talk about? Ohio State, Marvin Harrison, they, they just ripped him apart in the in the first half and then put it in cruise control in the second half. Um, yeah. But I don't know. It's everyone. Everyone's been so concerned about the offense lately. And I think I'm more concerned about the defense in in preparation for the Michigan game, I'm much more concerned about the defense. Again, because which is which is surprising with the start of the year here, where we weren't worried about the defense and in the offense, and now here we are in November, and it's kind of Kyle, the opposite sitting, now. Sitting here in November, ninety nine percent of Ohio State fans still feel that way. Ninety nine percent of Ohio State fans going into the Michigan game will be much more worried about Kyle McCord than they are about the defensive line. I. 
I think Kyle McCord is way better than fans think. And part of me thinks the defense isn't nearly as good as we think. Um, or at least if I fair to say this instead, I don't think we match up well against Michigan defensively. Maybe that's not the same as saying no. that they aren't as good. Maybe, maybe. Uh, yeah. And, and again, if Penn State had just kept giving the ball to Nick Singleton, that game would have been a lot closer. Michigan's not going to make that mistake. Just straight up, Michigan's not going to make that mistake. Anything else about the Michigan State game? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought Hartford played great in in the uh, in replacement for Josh Proctor. Um, yeah, Hartford played great. Styles played great. Styles had a very uh, Tyleek, good game. Tyleek had a good had a really good game too. Cody Simon in replace of um, of Tommy Eichenberg, Eichenberg. I cannot talk. I wanted to say Tommy Pickles, but uh, <laughs> Tommy Eichenberg. Um, I thought I thought I thought he did pretty well. Obviously, Missing Eichenberg. I think had a lot to do how, of why Michigan I, State had some success I, in I, the I run game. Totally disagree. But yeah, this was, has been an this has been an issue going at least back to Purdue, uh, and Eichenberg played in all of those games. Yeah, I thought overall overall there was quite a few players uh, who who stood up um, that really impressed me on the defensive side. I'm only concerned about ransom at this point in terms of injuries. I'm going to tell you not to worry about ransom and not yep. because there's good news coming. And I'll just leave that at that. Yep. All right. Let's go ahead and move into the grades then, Jared. Let's move into the grades. All right. First one here, coaching staff. I'm, I'll give, I'll give an, uh, let's say an A minus for me. I'll say an A minus for me. Giving the, I'm giving the minus mainly for, I think on the defensive running uh, side of it needs to be better, and special teams. I, I don't know what it is about this the special teams, but the special teams just really worries really worries me coming in uh, in two weeks here. It's very concerning to me that that the special teams could call could be the cause of a of a touchdown here. Yeah. And my, how, how the, the fake punt, like everyone knew that was coming. Yeah. Yes. What? I, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll go along with the minus part of your a based off of the fake punt alone. Mm hmm. Uh, quarterback play. I'll go first. I mean, for, the, for the first time this yeah, year, ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Kyle McCord not just the A but the A plus. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, what I, did I just do? Um, you zoomed. I did zoom. There we go. Um, th this is the Kyle McCord we've been waiting to see all season. See, here's the thing. Kyle McCord's been getting better and better. He got better and better and better all through October. And I just don't think people saw it because, again, Rutgers has a really good pass defense. And I know we're just not used to thinking of Rutgers being good in any way, but that's not true. They they have a lot of bright spots on that team. Um, Wisconsin has an incredible secondary. Penn State has an incredible secondary. Ohio State played a lot of teams recently with really, really good secondaries. And I just don't think we were seeing if you weren't watching closely, if you weren't watching correctly, you maybe just weren't seeing Kyle McCord get better. But Kyle McCord was getting better all through October. And I think I think he is starting. I, I don't want to say peak, but, you know, maybe his season peak is coming. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I'll give an A plus. I'll give an A plus. Well, I can't really think of really anything off to dock him here. I know we mentioned in our pregame here is that McCourney has been turnover prone recently, zero turnovers in this game. 
very accurate set. Like I mentioned, 77% accurate accuracy in this game here. Yeah. A plus a plus in my, in my book. One thing he is going to have to get better at, unfortunately is performing with a rush on him. One of the reasons why he was so good in this game yeah. was because the offensive line kept him so clean, partially because Michigan state's defensive line isn't that good. And then even with the talented guys that they do have on that defensive line, they, they kept getting dinged up all game. So they weren't even playing or playing at full speed. Uh, so in order to get pressure on any time they got pressure on Kyle McCord, it's because they sent a crazy blitz at him. Um, and, you know, he is going to have to get better at performing with with guys coming at him. Um, but he looked he looked really good in this game, largely because the offensive line kept him so clean. His first or second pass could have been picked. Safety was sitting on the route. Um, didn't he air that one on purpose? Like, I think he saw it and like purposefully threw it high. Am I re remembering that correctly? Spikes. I think he sailed that one on purpose. Might be. I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure. No, it deflected off the wide receiver. Okay. We're thinking of a different pass then. Well, if, if it hit the wide receiver, then. Oh, the, the one that ended up being a PI. Okay, I know what you're talking about now. Uh, running backs. I'm giving a, I'm giving a, I thought, I, I really liked what I saw out of Henderson. Henderson still, still, mon, still a monster. Xavier had some uh, great runs there. Um, yeah, I, and a, I, I, I really like the running backs here. I'm going to do an A minus. Um, I don't really know why. I mean, I think Trey probably would have had more had they given it to him more. They, they kept him on a pitch pitch count on this game. No reason to to risk him. Um, probably not fair to give him the minus, but I'm going to give the minus. It just it could have been a better day. All right. Hayden gets uh, carries next week. Question mark. Um, next week. No, I mean, if they're they're trying to preserve his red shirt, right? So you save him for Michigan. That's game number two. Then in an ideal world, you still have three games after that in an ideal world. Um, yeah, because you have the conference title game, the first round of the playoff, and then the national championship game. So you're definitely not going to use one on Minnesota. Yep. Because often he's ar he's already used one game and you kind of have four games you want to hold him back for and you can only use him in one of those or you can't. Yep. Yeah, you can't use him in one of those rather. Offensive line here. Maybe the first time I'm doing this here, Jared. A yeah, plus. Yeah. yeah, I agree. A plus here. Zero zero sex in this game. I think there was only th three, four. I think there was about four plays that ended up being zero yards on um, on the rushing side there. Offensive line did exactly what they needed to. This is the first time that they're very consistent here. Yeah. Very happy what I saw from the offensive line. Yeah, I don't I don't ever remember Kyle McCord getting pressured except when Michigan State sent like two or more blitzers. Um, I, I'd really have to go back and watch the game to confirm that. Um, first time I've seen them get to the second level consistently. I, ironically, um, I, Evan Pryor almost on the very last play of the game, the down the field, like there's an entire lane ready for him. And someone on the Michigan State defense just got his got their hand on him right when he was sort of going through the line. If he'd have made it to the second level, he was gone. Mm -hmm. uh, you could see. I mean, I I'm a nerd. I watch the offensive line most of the time and you could just you could see the pathway being laid out in front of him. It was it was there. 
tight end here. I uh, I, I really well, don't want to water down the A plus, but how can you not here? Tight yeah, ends right. also. I, I, wrote, I wrote A, but yeah, you're you're right. A plus. I A plus for the tight end here. Uh, a, a monster number of catches for Cade Stover. Uh, <laughs> Thurman uh, gets in the game late and looks pretty good. Um, and then again, you talk about down the field blocking and second level blocking and the offensive line looking good. We also have to talk about the tight ends because like. I at this point, like. Yes, yeah, Scott, yeah. Scott, you're you're talking about the down the field blocking. Scott, Scott's, made, Scott made some great, great blocks down the Scott's field. Scott's practically too. a fullback at this point. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's it's a it's a great. And by the way, it is. It is truly the year of the tight end. Like we always joke about uh, year of the tight end, year of the tight end. And then, of course, it never ends up being the year of the tight end. But. It's actually the year of the tight end. It it actually is Yodi. The the prophecies were true. It, it is Yodi. This time it is for real. Um, Cade Stover is within decent striking distance of getting the uh, yardage record for a tight end in a season. Coming up on Ricky Dudley, I think he's... I think I thought, I thought I saw Austin say in the Discord he's like 160 some yards off or something like that. Um, Kate Stover's having a hell of a year. 164 gangland says. A uh, lot. <laughs> and, and a by, lot. And, and like if you were. You know, you're coming into the season and you're like. It's going to be the, you know. It's obviously going to be a Marvin Harrison year and it's going to be a Mecca Buka year. Mecca Buka hasn't looked right this year. He suffered an ankle injury pretty early on. He just hasn't been. He hasn't been himself. It hasn't. It has not been the year that a Mecca Buka wanted for himself, let alone that we've wanted for him. It's not his fault. It's just it's football shit happens. Um, yep. And Kate Stover has become the second guy. In a in a, on a team filled with five star wide receivers, the second target on this team is Cade Stover. And you know, Jared, I think I called that shit at the beginning <laughs> of the year. <laughs> I think I called that McCord, McCord's going to favor going to favor uh, the tight end mainly Cade Stover. I, I think I think I believe I called that. It it's, is. it's it's your it's your first it's your it's your new quarterback's safety blanket. And that's and that's the big tight end, especially for a quarterback that's not mobile like Cade's Cade Stover is the prototypical safety blanket for a quarterback. Like McCoy. Or McCord, like uh, Kyle McCord. Um, because like with C.J. Stroud, I think I feel like C.J. Stroud's safety blanket often would be to scramble out and do a scramble drill and look for someone on the sideline. I feel like that was his safety blanket as a young guy. Um, yep. Speaking of which CJ Stroud, holy hell, but we're not going to get sidetracked into that conversation. Um, yeah. uh, let, well, it's, let's it's, move on it's to absolutely. The... But yeah, you know, you Kyle, you're absolutely right for a quarterback. That's not, CJ Stroud and isn't mobile like CJ Stroud. Um, the safety blanket oftentimes is the tight end. Yep. All right. Wide receivers here. I I mean, it heavily heavily favoring uh, the performance from Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, I'm a minus for me for the for the wide receivers. Marvin had himself a fantastic game here. He seems to do really well against uh, Michigan State. Uh, Tate is really starting to come out of his shell here. We're starting to see a lot more of Tate. Uh, Fleming made a couple of catches in this game. Always great to see Fleming uh, um, getting into the game here and making some plays. And yeah, we'll, and we'll see about Emeka 
and see if he see how close to 100 percent he can he can get here in the next couple of weeks but yeah a, a minus I, I i can't say too much negative about the about the wide receivers here so a minus xavier johnson's one reception was that a like a was that that wasn't like a down the field throw was it that was like a yeah that was the wheel route yes well let's look here so yep, it was short short yeah it was in the uh second quarter there so he uh, was short right pass yeah that that was just, the uh the wheel route making the point that he was playing running back when he made that play yes he was mm-hmm. he was being running back x in that on that play and not wide receiver x on that play yes yeah i believe so okay so i just want to clear that up receiving Number one in receptions, wide receiver. Tied for number one in receptions, Cade Stover. Then a running back. Then Tate, who got his catches late. Well, at least one of the catches was late. A tight end, a running back, a wide receiver, a running back, a wide receiver. I'm sorry, we are grading based off of expectations. And the wide receiver room feels like one guy right now. And this should be in its entirety, an amazing unit. Well, oh, in, in all fairness too, is, is this because Marvin Harrison is just getting that open? It's not, it's not stopping Cade Stover from getting catches. I that's fair. I'm, and like we can we can give a mecca a pass because of his injury, but like so, 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 you so take it's a mecca it sound out, like that you you're, you're putting else. you're putting you're you're gr- you're grading them lower. So if you're saying saying you take out Marvin, um, you're excluding Mecca. I'm well, no, I'm not excluding it, it, Mecca. He Mecca only had one catch for twelve yards. Yeah, you're, you're making it sound like it's one receiver then that's not performing I, like if, if you if you have if you have you, three main if receiver if, if you have three in, main receivers marvin harrison jr emeka and, and fleming. uh fleming you're you're kind of pointing the finger that that it's it's fleming's needing to step no, up then. xavier johnson plays wide receiver out there all the time but whenever he ends up getting a decent catch, it's when he's playing running back. So it's also pointed at Xavier Johnson and a lot of other guys who are out there getting reps at wide receiver, getting rotated in. Um, I'm sorry, the, the wide receiver room based off of recruiting stars should be the best in the country. And right now it just looks like the Marvin Harrison show. So I'm, I'm only I'm only going to give the wide receivers a B. Because I need to see productions out production out of wide receivers whose name isn't Marvin Harrison. If if you're gonna start, I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna give him anything above a B unless a second wide receiver starts to wow me and and get production. All right, all right, fine. We're, we're, we're gonna move on here. Moving on to the defensive side, the defensive line. Talk, talked quite a bit about the defensive line and the rushing attack here. Or the rush defense side, I, I'll give a C. It's average. Definitely could be a lot better. They did they did hold Michigan State to three point two yards per carry, but it. But if you take uh, the just the two running backs, yeah, they averaged about four point three yards. Not 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 where it needs to be, but when it comes to the the passing pass um, rush on it, they're one of the best in the country there even even if it doesn't result in a sack they get the pressure they they get the throw early here so i'll i'll, I'll give it i'll give a c spike says in the chat they have to blitz to get run stops consistently when they don't they get gashed i i, I and by the way it's the same thing on the pass right now quite frankly it's the same thing on the pass they're not getting decent pass rush with any consistency with without a blitz either um i again based off of recruiting stars and based off of expectations they're not meeting them 
And I, I already, and by the way, they haven't been for a while. Uh, I already went down through the list of the running backs with over five or near five yard carry per averages against them. Um, the defensive line's not playing well, which is crazy because I like all of them individually, but something's not clicking. So something's not clicking. I, I don't know what it is. I like all of them individually. I like all of, I would, I wouldn't replace a single one of them, <laughs> but something's not working. And I don't know what that something is. Uh, the guys are not meeting expectations. All right. Um, linebackers, linebackers. I thought they did. They did well enough um, without, without Tommy Eichenberg. So I, I give a B for the linebackers. Nothing spectacular, but nothing that really hurt Ohio State as well, too. So I, th I think a B is fair. Um. Yeah, I think a B is fair. Uh, I think I'll actually add a plus onto it simply because Eichenberg didn't play. Yeah. Um, so that lowers the expect, you know, a grade base of like off of expectation. Eichenberg not playing lowers the expectation a little bit. So the younger linebackers looked better with reps. It's a problem Ohio State's going to have to deal with uh, because. Eichenberg's off to the NFL after this season. I'm sure. I assume Steele is going to be gone. Cody Simon may or may not be gone. Um, and no one else is. No one else at linebacker has been getting serious reps. So yeah, the concern we'll we'll worry about uh, for next, next year. year. Yeah, uh, uh, corners. A, I'll give I'll give the corners an A. Uh, really like what I saw from Hancock, uh, Matthews. I thought did really well. Egwinosin, still really really good stud here. Yeah, really. Re and uh, Burke had himself an okay game, but I think Egwinosin and Matthews. Okay game. I, I think I think were the and Hancock were the were the standouts to me. Kyle, what do we always say about corners? Yeah, no, no stats equals good. Yeah, it's <laughs> we we saw them take a couple shots against Denzel Burke early in the game. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Denzel fair. Burke had a great that's tackle fair. for loss on a I don't know it was like a screen or a swing or something, um, which in all fairness was really Hancock's play. Hancock blew that play up, and Burke yeah. to his to his credit was in position to clean it up. And then they tried throwing against them a few times and it just, it wasn't happening. So they just stopped trying. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so you gave him an A as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, safeties a, a as well. Uh, you, you're without Proctor in this game here and they, they didn't miss a beat to me. They, they did not miss a beat at all. Um, really, Really like what I saw from um um oh, I am drawing Hartford. a blank on his name here. Hartford, yes. Hartford. Very impressed what I saw with from Hartford in this game. Really, really impressed though. So what was the hey. longest play gangland asks? You you look that up for a second. I'll I'll give my explanation on the safeties. Uh everything Kyle said, I'm gonna I'm actually gonna throw in the plus. I'm gonna I'm going to look up the I'm going to I'm going to go with the A plus on this one again, because Ohio State was playing with their third and fourth safeties. So like with Eichenberg. It lowers the expectation slightly, right? Um, so I'm I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw in that A plus when, you know, you have to throw in a red shirt freshman who's your fourth safety in and start. And it feels like you don't miss a step. Yeah, I'm going to go A plus on that. Okay. 27 yard. 27 yard was their longest play. That's not bad. 
And that was a rush. Their longest pass, longest pass was um, was in the first quarter, um, twenty yards. But then, but then outside of that, their longest pass was like eleven yards. Right. Uh, yeah, Ohio State, and and, and, that, and that twenty and that twenty yard was the one where Burke played ten yards away. Looked like he looked like he was expecting help on the inside there. Yeah, but yeah, it's it may fine. have been. It could have been right, seven and, even. Uh, yeah, the right, and special team and special teams D plus D plus to me. Like it's, I I, I said it earlier here. There's just something very wrong with our special teams right now, and I I have a feeling that they could be the cause of a just a unwanted touchdown here. Like there's there's just something going on here that I I'm very very concerned with here. I'm not I'm not gonna go that hard on them. Um, I I don't. I'm not gonna go that hard. Uh, I'm gonna go with a C. Yeah, um, yeah. Speaks Z Spike said you should. <laughs> I don't. I they didn't. I I I share your anxiety with the special teams. I just don't think they did anything that horribly egregious in this game to warrant a D. Um, I keep mixing up our stuff on the graphic for some reason. Um, the I'm just I'm gonna. I don't know, C C feels better. I mean, I I get what you're saying, but again, like there was no. Uh, if if I'm gonna give if I'm gonna give him a D, then like there needs to be like a turnover or a shanked punt or a muffed punt or a, like they have to have actually done something to really screw up. Um. Well. They, they missed they missed a field goal i know but it wasn't it wasn't like an egregious miss it wasn't like it was a 30 yarder and it wasn't it wasn't like it was some sort of horrible shank you know what i mean just do something yeah, above it, it, normal thank you gangland i totally agree with the phrase just do something above normal and right now they're just exceptionally nothing which i think is what c is c is average C is average. C is uh, normal. C's, C's not average. So, C is not average. Okay. All right. Let's move on to our Buckeye leaves. So these are those are our grades. We'll move on to our Buckeye leaves here, and we'll start on the offense here. Got to give it to the Heisman candidate here, uh, Marvin Harrison. Got to give it to Marv. Yeah, I, I I don't disagree. How could you disagree? Um, I'm gonna go Kyle McCord. Um, I, again, this Kyle McCord starting to starting to come into his own. Uh, I think we're, we're starting to see the Kyle McCord that we wanted to see. And again, I know I've said this probably twice already this episode. I'm going to say it again. While everyone was doubting him and everyone was saying, why aren't you being perfect during October? When they were playing amazing, well, not not uh, not October. The Rutgers was in November, but you get my point. Um, he was playing a great pass. There's the the defenses in the Big Ten are so good this year. They're so good that even Rutgers' pass defense is really good, and Wisconsin's pass defense is really good, and Penn State's pass defense is really good. And people just expected Kyle McCord to go out there and look like against those defenses what it looked like against Michigan State's defense which is what most college passing defenses look like and Kyle McCord has the it's iron sharpening iron and yeah when everyone was thinking he was underperforming he was getting better he was facing incredibly tough competition and he was getting better uh, do you want to peak when it's AP poll ranking or college football rankings? Yeah, that's the other thing. I, I do think Ohio State's offense is like starting to. Yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying, and I agree, Gangland. All right, let's move on to the defense here then. 
<laughs> you know our you know our fan base. They want one hundred percent peak. Uh, that's not a peak. That's a plateau. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then they would complain, why aren't we getting better? <laughs> yeah. All right. Defensively, I'm going to give mine a hard for it. I know, I know I gave them some some crap the the previous game here, but against Michigan State, played very well, very impressed with them. So I'll I'll give my buckeye leave to to Hartford. Spike says Styles is his pick, which is also my pick. Um yeah, I, I thought Styles has been He's nasty, good blitzing. Yeah, uh, bo- both pass yes. and both pass and run blitzing, which I don't know if enough people realize are totally different skill sets, uh, but he's handling both of them exceptionally. Uh, he's stepped in uh, for ransom. And like I said, the defense hasn't really even no, no offense to ransom. I think ransom's great. Um, I wish we had him still, but uh, Ohio State's defense really hasn't lost a step. Yeah. And he's right, and then just the wild, 18. God, that's yeah. something to think about. And, and the wild card, I'll I'll give mine to I'll give mine to uh to McCord. Thought he had a hell of a game here. Um type of uh type of game that's really should boost his confidence here. So yeah, I'll give mine to McCord. Um yeah, my wild card's actually going to Hartford uh, for reasons Kyle already explained. Uh, for reasons I already explained when I gave the safeties an A+. Redshirt freshman, I don't think anyone was anticipating he'd be getting serious playing time right now. Uh, I, I, but, you know, the two starting safeties get hurt. You get down to the third and the fourth safety. And again, he's he's stepped in and done exceptionally well yep all right um spikes wants to give his wild card to stover hey that's that's totally that's a good one too that's a good one too you come back from injury seven catches uh what was that seven catches has a touchdown in there 79 yards yeah hell of a response coming back here and by the way farmer strong stiff arm (laughs) yeah he had a case of the drops earlier in the season, and we haven't seen that recently. So, nope. Hey, it's easy to let something like that catch up with you mentally, and he didn't do it. You know what the wild? You know what the wild card should have been, Jared? We, we've talked zero about yeah, it. Yes, bikes. Those gray uniforms. <laughs> I don't. You you you're <laughs> the one that likes to do the abstract wild card sticker helmets I, I i never do that but that would have been like a you thing to do yeah. here's here's my here's my one note on the gray uniforms here's my one note on the gray uniforms i yeah I, I i the silver helmet doesn't look right with the gray uniform in my opinion uh, i would really like to see a matte gray helmet mm-hmm. I, I think i think i think they need to complete the look do like like I said, like a matte gray helmet to match the jerseys because you you just have the gray on the uniform, which is obviously not shiny. How it, I don't want it to be shiny. If you made it shiny, it would be slick and you'd have fumbles. Um, yeah, but I I I want the I want the uh, helmet to better match the uniforms so they either need to go totally off brand and do like a black or a red helmet maybe do some bright red shoes and bright red helmet and some bright red gloves to sort of contrast the gray or you totally lean into the gray but do not silver helmets but gray helmets that's a fashion corner yeah. with jared and kyle all right, moving on um, quickly to, we have just a few Ask Sloopcast questions here. Uh, let's see here. First first question we have here is, who is the Heisman frontrunner? Uh, you're, you're asking a pair of Ohio State podcasters who their Heisman frontrunner is. Are you expecting us to be unbiased? Because that's a silly expectation. Say Jaden Daniels, I dare you. 
Um, Jaden Daniels is, I'm not gonna say he's the deserving person for the Heisman, but he's, but I, I think he's worthy of the Heisman, but, and these aren't my rules. These are Heisman rules. This is how Heisman voting goes. I think they're not going to give it to him because LSU has three losses. When you're a quarterback, you can't have three losses and still win the Heisman unless you play for like Louisville, a team that's not expected to win all their games. I think right now who's being invited to New York is four people. It's Jaden Daniels, uh, Penix, Nix, and Marvin Harrison Jr. Those are your four that's going to be invited to New York. But at this point, it's it's a three-person race with Penix, Nix, and, and Harrison. And if you're going to give it to who's the best, the best college football player in the country, call me Homer, but it's it's Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. I think it also could have been Bowers had he not got hurt, but he got hurt. Mm-hmm. Yep, um, but he got hurt. Yep. But he got hurt. All right. Um, another question. How much does Tommy being out affect your perception of the lack of run defense early? Some. Zero. Zero. The, the, the run, the run defense issues were present when Tommy was in the game against Rutgers and Purdue and Penn state and Wisconsin. Uh, as I laid out the numbers earlier, um, T- Tommy Eichenberg is not a lack of Tommy Eichenberg in this game is not the cause of Ohio state's run defense issues. Right, a few more questions. Uh, which freshman stood out the most to you? I mean, we've talked a lot about Hartford in this um, in, in this game. Yeah, it's Hartford Hartford in this game, but as the season's going along, I'd say Tate. Tate's really been um, very um, stood out to me the most. But this this last game, Hartford. Yeah. Does Hey Gangland? Does does Hartford count because he's a redshirt freshman? Do, do red shirts count in this question, or do I have to name a a freshman freshman? Cause I don't know how many freshmen freshmen even got like true game time aside from Tate. But yeah, um, I mean, we, we've talked to, we've talked a lot about Hartford in this game. So I'll say Hartford. Okay. Um, let's see. Does a Heisman quarterback win a game by throwing no passes in the second half? Jeez. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, I. I mean, I people haven't seriously talked about JJ McCarthy as a serious Heisman contender since. I don't know, like the off season, like he. he the Michigan offense is not a stat heavy offense and you have to have stats to win the Heisman. I I don't know what else to say. It's it's I wish it wasn't a stat based award, but it's a stat based award. Yeah. And then that last one here. Um, what is what is the record for mo- for missed? What is the record for missed field goals against Ohio State in a season? I don't I'm know. Not, I'm not going to be able to look that up yeah, in that, time. That's, a, that's, here, a, that's I, a difficult. That is but, a difficult look it up, Kyle. Look it up. But I will tell you that for the season, uh, there have been six missed field goals uh, against Ohio State from opponents this year. They are ten for sixteen this year. Oh, there you go. Right, that's it, Jared. We are coming up on the hour mark exactly here. So I'm I will we'll go ahead and um we'll go ahead and end it right there. All right. It's the only impressive special team stat. I don't even know how impressive it is, to be honest with you. Um I I could say more about the special teams, but as Kyle said, we're 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 up on that. Yeah, exactly. We're we're up on that mark. So I'm just gonna end the show. Um, 
not even gonna not even gonna kick over to Kyle's corner or or do plugs. I'm just gonna straight up end the show. I think um, the night's ending music is by Defiance Ohio, who ironically is a band based in or was based in Columbus. Um, I don't I don't think they're still active, um, but the uh, yeah Defiance Ohio uh, is the band. So with all that being said. I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer and to local music and, of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Defiance, Ohio.